Hey guys, <laughs> good evening. I am here for our next, um, goodness, I lost all my train of thought. <laughs> I am here for our next marathon, right? Marathon. So we're on a marathon this week where I come on and five days in a row, I talk about any given subject. And this particular marathon, I was, I'm talking about uh, mastery and how it helps you to build a brand. So today I specifically wanted to speak to uh, business owners who have a team or have a desire to grow a team or who have staff and some things that you can master um, in order to build an amazing brand. So if that sounds good to you, maybe you'll come back on the replay. Uh, let me know you were here. Let me know how this broadcast registered for you. This is not a normal uh, time frame for me. I normally broadcast every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, except for the first Monday in every month. But for my marathon, because I, you know, come on and broadcast five days in a row, I had to pick a time that was convenient in between my normal uh, regular schedule and routine. So, hey, Amanda, how are you, dear? So we're here. Guys, if you own a business and you have staff or you are thinking about developing a team, uh, put me in the comments. Let me know, even if you come back on the replay, and, and let me know if you have staff or if that's something that you're considering doing for your business. I find that one of the biggest mistakes business owners make is taking a long time to have staff and develop a team, right? That's one of the biggest mistakes. And what happens when we take a long time to do that, we end up just creating a job for ourselves. So we open a business that really becomes a job for us, you know? So we leave one job or the job industry and then we develop this other thing that requires us to always be there or always be trading our personal time for dollars in order to earn revenue. So one of the biggest mistakes we make, first of all, as business owners, is taking forever uh, to hire someone or to develop a team or get some help uh, in our business so that it can grow, so that we can get some more time freedom. And I'm going to talk about uh, what I feel a business owner uh, should master if, uh, when it, as it relates to growing a team and a staff if they really want to build an amazing brand. For those of you who've never been on the broadcast, maybe someone shared the broadcast out and you popped on and you were like, who is this lady? I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry. Hey Russ, how are you dear? Tanya Wilson Cherry, I'm a transformational growth strategist. So I believe in growth. I believe we were meant and put on this earth to grow and continuously evolve. I believe that um, what we put our hands to should grow. It shouldn't be stifled. It should be on this consistent growth path. And so I'm a growth strategist. I'm also a business consultant and certified life coach. Uh, my brand is a full circle uh, brand, whereas I talk about mindset, this thing right here, uh, personal growth and business building. So full circle. So my clients get their whole life when <clears throat> they come and, and have me to help them with their business because I believe that our life, it rolls over into our business, guys. And so when we can find harmony in those two things, we build better businesses. I believe that as we grow people, the people grow the business. And this is one of the main reasons I talk about growth. And one of the things that stifles us in that, and this is amazing because I, I had a conversation today <clears throat> with a client and we were talking about how um, our system really wasn't set up for entrepreneurship, our school system. So our school system is more so, and this is my personal opinion, uh, more so set up so that we can go and work a job and be in companies and things of that nature. And oftentimes that mindset doesn't require us to be in a space of possibility. Uh, so many of, I mean, this is the conversation we were having that even people in higher level positions don't necessarily, they aren't necessarily comfortable in what it is that they're doing, but fear, the uncertainty of you know being an entrepreneur is what keeps them stuck in that position and i believe it's all mindset i believe that every new level uh, that we reach in our life and our business is based on our thinking and so one of the things i want to do is expose though of you, those of you who have a business or uh, desire to have a business to some of the things that it takes to really 
build an amazing brand. And the first thing basically is just building up ourselves because as we grow and develop personally, we grow amazing businesses. We have amazing relationships because we make better choices. Um, and you know, we have amazing financial situations. All of it is based on our personal growth. And so that's the perspective that I teach my clients from. I find that when we focus on mindset and they're thinking around money or whatever it is that they're doing, uh, they're able to implement the strategies on like this super high level. And so today we're talking about business owners who have a team or a staff and what they can master in order to build an amazing brand. And <laughs> guys, first of all, let, let me talk about some of the things. Um, learning to manage your time, and I know these things may sound um, trivial or like you've heard them before, but four words that I think keep us from growth is, I already know that. I already know that. Those are four, four words that I keep, I feel keeps us stuck and, and unable to grow because we hear things that seem simple or trivial and we say, I've already heard that before or I already know that. But knowing something and implementing it is two different things. It's two different things. And a, a business owner who really wants to grow a great team will learn great time management skills because you're not only managing yourself, now you're managing systems that other people have to run. <clears throat> and before I go too far into the specific things, uh, a business owner who has a team or staff, the thing that they should ma master is leadership because everything that I'm gonna talk about on today are leadership issues. They're, they're nothing but leadership issues. Uh, you'd be surprised at the number of people who come to me who say, well, I've tried hiring before or I had someone to work with me and I was consistently telling them, you know, what to do and I might, might as well have done it myself. That's a leadership issue. So what's missing is a, a, another level of training. There's another level of training missing. I remember uh, working at a salon and... Uh, the general manager is who hired me, so not the owner. And I did something that I wasn't supposed to do. Now I'm new to the company. I don't know the complete flow. I've had, you know, inter I've been interviewed several times because you had to have, you know, several interviews in order to uh, even work at the, this particular salon. And I did something that I wasn't supposed to do. And the general manager was pissed. She was livid. And she expressed it to me. She expressed it to me in front of a client. And, you know, I, for me, I was like, well, that was a little unprofessional of her. I didn't say it out loud, but those were the things that I said to myself. And for, for whatever reason, she may have just had a bad day because she stopped everybody uh, from working. And what I did, I scheduled a client and I didn't do it at the front desk. So all clients were supposed to be scheduled at the front desk. But I didn't know that. I finished a customer. She asked, could she reschedule? I told her yes, because I, I didn't know the routine. I was so new to um, the business. But anyway, in, in all of that, she held a big meeting in the back. And she said, Did anybody, does anybody have anything that they need to say? And I said, you know, I do. And I said, one, I think it was unprofessional of you. Now, I was 20 some years old. Where the boldness came from, I don't know. But I said, I think it was a little unprofessional of you to, you know, share that with me in front of my client. And I didn't know. No one had told me. And if I wasn't, uh, if I didn't understand that the, the place that I was working was so valuable, that would easily have been a moment of turnoff for me or, you know, I don't even want to be here. But it was because I had not been trained. Do you guys get that? It was because I had not been trained. And so oftentimes I see, um, so oftentimes I, I get people who have worked at companies and one of their biggest issues was, you know, they were being reprimanded for different things, but they didn't know. And training is one of the biggest things that you need in your company because it teaches your staff and the people to come in. It teaches them your culture. It teaches them the things that you value and it teaches them how to serve the customers on a high level, which is how your business continues to make money. And so one of the things that a, a business owner should master is training. 
And, you know, then I'll hear from owners that, you know, I just don't have the time to train. And this is where a mindset shift has to be shifted because the goal is to uh, replicate the systems or the processes that produce revenue in your business and then, you know, have somebody to train it to someone else so that you free up your time. And most people fear taking the time from being, um, and this is mostly for service-based business owners or, or even if you're a coach, most oftentimes we fear, you know, slowing down long enough to actually train people into our processes and our systems. Also, um, great communication. So the business owner needs to learn to communicate. And this is why I talk so often about um, everything as it relates to growth is really about us. It determines whether or not we can grow our business. And so if we are terrible communicators, then our likelihood of being able to communicate with staff is real slim. It's really slim. And so I'm not like just pushing, you know, everybody just needs to grow, but I know that so many people want to grow a team and, and build a staff and being able to communicate is, is huge, guys, right? And communication is not only, um, when I say that, I don't mean, you know, hey, how are you? Or being able to speak kindly to people, that's part of it. But being able to even communicate when the staff has not done something, you know, in the manner that it should be done, right? Being able to communicate those things, being in a space where the leader is strong enough to hold people responsible and accountable. So if they're, um, and, and I think the way that we go about doing this is so important because sometimes if we are in boss mode as opposed to leadership mode, um, it can be in an authoritative way in, instead of looking at what the system is that you've created, that you've trained them on, that you've shown to them and letting them know that their performance didn't meet you know, what you all had set out in what you had trained them in. Does that make sense for those of you who have a staff or team that you're developing? There's a way to be able to um, deliver and communicate with your staff and your team that's gonna cause the company to grow. And remember I said that communicating is not just being able to say, hey, how are you? But many uh, owners uh, and business, business owners struggle to even you know talk about what needs to to be talked about in order for the company to move forward and and i feel like this happens because the leader has not clearly defined what the vision is for the company or the business so so often we'll open a business and we have no forward progression about what the business is going to do except we just hoping that the business makes money and those aren't clear directives for a, a staff or or a team right and so we got to get over ourselves and not be so easily offended. I think that we should have um, the ability to have open feedback from, from our team, right? Because we don't know all of the answers. We have the vision, but we don't necessarily know all of the answers in between. And oftentimes your, your staff and your team members see things that you don't always see. And they're able to share those insights with you and, um, and help you to grow the company. Um, I said uh, relationship skills, basically, communication, um, accountability, be able to hold people accountable, and then be accountable ourselves. When I, when I owned a, a brick and mortar, there was nothing that, my, that I required my staff to do that I wasn't willing to do myself. So yes, I hired them for that specific position, but oftentimes if it needed to be done and I'm walking past it and I'm not you know, getting ready to do something else, I don't have anything else planned, I would do it, right? So they saw me roll my sleeves up and do the things that needed to be done. And it was so beautiful because I never required my staff to like clean the toilets or, or anything of that nature, but they would mop the floors, they would clean the toilet. And those things were not in their description, you know, their job description. They would just see that it needed to be done and they would do it. And I think sometimes when we get in a leadership position, uh, we sometimes take on the thing, I mean, well, that's what I pay them for and you do. This shouldn't be something that's happening all the time where you're having to go and do the work that they are 
being paid to do but if you guys are really really busy and things are going on and you see something and you can do it then you should let them see you you know roll your your sleeves up especially if you're initiating a new team member on to into your business or into your company uh, the greatest businesses are run by the greatest leaders and for in order to build an amazing brand uh, the, it's, it's all on leadership. I remember feeling like, you know, the people that I was hiring when I first uh, began hiring in my business, that was maybe in 04, uh, that I was like, man, you know, the people don't want to do the work and, you know, what's going on with these people um, in this generation or whatever the case may have been. But, you know, I soon learned that, that it wasn't a staff problem. It was a leadership problem. I needed to learn to hire differently. And so leadership entails so many things that I don't think we all always think about when we step into those positions, but oftentimes they're just following suit. They're really just following suit. And we, when we become better in our relationship skills, we hire differently. We bring people on our team differently. They're more qualified. Um, and that's because we sat down and we really created this vision about where we want our business and our company to go. Right? And so once we've created that, then everybody that we bring on board aligns with that. So one of the biggest things that we're uh, slow to do is to hire, right? We're really, really slow to hire. You know, people will say, I don't like managing people, but the goal is not to manage people. The goal is to manage systems. So take the time that's necessary in your business to sit down and really look at your business and develop systems and processes for everything that you do. That way, if you do have a team member that leaves, it's pretty much just the system that you're training the next individual on. So many people don't really have a system and they hire someone and that person develops the systems and then the person leaves and they feel like they're starting from scratch again. So it is our responsibility to have at least the basic foundational systems in our business. Write down your processes and procedures and then you can duplicate them over and over again with different people. So leadership is one of the biggest things that a business owner can master. I believe as uh, business owners, we're all leaders, whether we have one person working with us or 20. Um, and even if you know we're solo for a minute, you're the leader, right? And so it's important that we're on this continuous growth path as leaders, because as our leadership skills grow, being able to manage our time properly, um, being able to develop systems, being able to have open feedback from <clears throat> staff and team members, not being easily offended, being able to really hold people accountable. All of those are their leadership skills. And so the business is moving and flowing based on um, the mastery that we're developing as leaders. And for those of you who are in a leadership position because you're coaching, one of the things I, I feel we have a big responsibility to, to do is check our integrity. And so there's so many coaches who um, are coming into the, the industry and they want to teach things that they haven't implemented themselves. One of the best, if you had to think about, you know, I'm, I want to be a coach or I'm a, an inspiring coach or I, I want to grow uh, my business as a coach, learn the system, implement the system, and then teach it. Learn the system implement the system and then teach it. And so often we learn the system as in we hear about knowledge and then we go straight into, you know, wanting to teach it to someone else. And it's usually some things in between that are missing. And so we, you know, what we're developing is a team member that didn't get all the answers um, because we ourselves had not implemented and found great systems to be able to effectively um, teach it. So that's my take on today, guys. Those of you who have a team or staff, one of the best things that we can master is um, leadership. We can master our ability to lead. There are going to be things that come up in our business that, you know, that are new to us, that we introduce to the team, that are innovative, and that we're trying kind of like as, as we go, we're teaching it. But first and foremost, as the business owner, you need a vision. You need a vision because it's from that point where you've established your values and um, systems and things for your business that you can lead the staff and the team around those systems. So many people leave because of inconsistencies in our business. They don't feel like they're trained properly. Um, and we're so busy, right? We, we've gotten so busy 
that we don't even have the time to train. This is where learning to you know manage our time and our schedule uh, comes in because there has to be time for training if we want to grow amazing businesses and if we want our team to serve you know the guests or the customers or whatever it is that you may have your team doing, whether it's a virtual assistant. You still need a system for them and then you need to manage your time. Uh, I work with several uh, businesses who have you know other people that do things for them so they'll get a customer to do an event or whatever for and then they have team members that work with them and the team is ready and available but the business owner is their time management is terrible so they're completing the jobs late and you know the team only knows what you're able to tell them to do and this is why I talk so often about us as business owners uh, building businesses with time freedom that develop financial freedom because when we've created systems and, and our, we're growing in our leadership because leadership is when we put the systems in place, we're training, you know, we, we understand how to hold people accountable, we have an open door policy, it's so many things about leadership but as we begin to master those things we grow a better team and then we build a better brand because it's also a place where other team members want to come and be a part of and where customers want to continuously come over and over again because of how they're treated in their you know customer transaction in those processes because we've trained you know we've trained our team and so it's important to take the time you got to sit down sometimes guys and you know maybe rethink your business model um, say hey is this what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of my life just like this and if so is it gonna work right is it going to get me where I need to go and so um, I, I think the biggest thing that this one of the worst mistakes we make is being so slow to hire help within our businesses and attempting to do it all right and a great leader knows that there's no way they can effectively do it all and grow their business because it will become overwhelming um, and and then we start giving poor customer service um, it's, it's just too much for one person for a business that is uh, really really looking to grow so the one thing that we can master uh, when we have a team and um, or staff is our leadership it's our leadership it all falls back on on leadership so it's not um, if you see a really really great business there's a great leader somewhere in the process there's a great leader and great leaders are always on a continuous path to grow that way they stay ahead of their staff I think rest is super important for us because it's in those spaces that we can really think about doing productive things in our business and if you're you're wondering like should I have a team or should I hire a team your team is there so that you can focus on more of the high uh, income producing or the higher level um, processes in your business and you can delegate some of those tasks to someone else which allows you to scale and grow your business faster but that's my take on today um, for us as business owners uh, one of the biggest mistakes we make is being too slow about hiring and one of the best things that we can master is our leadership because it's from that point that we build great systems, we um, attract great people, we train great teams, and we build amazing brands. You guys have a super, super amazing evening. I'll see you guys on tomorrow for day four, day four of Mastery, the key to building an amazing brand and um, for those of you joining us strategic Le leadership growth retreat tomorrow May the 10th um, is the last day at the cost that it is now is 997 for the two-day premium opportunity it's 1297 for uh, VIP you guys can go to www.strategicleadershipgrowth.com we're going to be talking about things you can do if you're building a team some systems you can put in place um, we're also going to be talking about systems that create more time and financial freedom for you. It's going to be in an amazing space um, and atmosphere. Um, we're going to have a great time while we're in there. Very private. Um, I'm not having 50 to 100 people because I'll really be helping you work through your individual business and looking at ways to strategize and um, increase your profits without increasing the amount of personal time that you're implementing into that but we're going to have a great time so for you women service-based business owners coaches um, and salon owners um, that is august the third through the fifth www.strategic 
leadershipgrowth.com www.strategicleadershipgrowth.com tomorrow no well so it'll actually be the 11th because after may 10th um the investment cost increases it's going to be amazing i'm so excited about the opportunity to share some of the things that i've learned how i've doubled my income and uh, cut my work time in half and some of the systems I use and the business models I'll be sharing those things and you guys will leave with strategy um, That you can go and implement and begin just increasing your time freedom as you're growing your financial freedom It's, it's my heart. We as women have so many things that we're responsible for and when we're running a business learning to run it efficiently in a way that allows us time freedom is super super important so Hopefully, I'll see some of you who are popping on in there. I think there are 11 spaces uh, left for that opportunity. And um, yeah, mastery is the thing that helps you build an amazing brand.